Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take a look at what we call the relativistic triangle. Now this is actually a really ingenious method of graphically representing the relationship between the momentum, the rest mass energy, the total energy, and the kinetic energy of a particle at relativistic speeds. Really ingenious. I wish I had thought of it. Someone else, very smart, had thought of this concept. And notice how we drew here a right triangle where the bottom leg here, the length of that is equal to the rest mass energy. The opposite side here is equal to the momentum times the speed of light, and the hypotenuse here is equal to the total energy, which means it's equal to the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy. If we now draw a arc starting from this point right here and anchoring on the pivot point right here, and if we draw an arc along this way, we can then see that this distance right here is the same as this distance, so therefore this represents the rest mass energy just like this represents the rest mass energy. And so the leftover energy right here, that has to be the kinetic energy to make up the total energy. And then realize, if we use Pythagorean theorem here, we can see that this side squared plus this side squared must equal this side squared, which then lends itself to this equation right here, where the total energy squared is equal to the rest mass energy squared plus the momentum times the speed of light quantity squared. So this is a visual representation of this equation. In addition, if you look at the hypotenuse here, we can see that this length plus this length gives us a total energy, in other words, the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy equals the total energy, which we wrote right there. Sometimes I'll put a sub T there to indicate total energy. Simply, if it doesn't have any subscript, just E by itself, it does indeed mean total energy. Another way of looking at it, we can say that E, the total energy, is therefore also equal to the total mass times c squared, and of course, since the total mass can be written as gamma times m, like this, we can write it as gamma times the rest mass times c squared. In other words, the total energy can also be written as the rest mass energy divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, so you know that gamma is therefore equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. All right, so now we know that, let's take another closer look at this triangle. Let's take a look at this angle right here, and let's calculate the sine and the cosine of that angle, and you'll find some interesting results. So we take the sine of the angle theta, which by definition is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Oh, nope, nope, not, oh, that's the tangent. We don't want to have the adjacent side. It's the opposite side over the hypotenuse, of course. We can then say that that is the ratio between the momentum and the times the speed of light divided by the total energy, E total. This is then equal to the ratio of the momentum times the speed of light divided by the hypotenuse, which is simply m sub naught c squared plus the kinetic energy. So that's how we can represent the sine of theta in that triangle. Now even the, the cosine of theta is even more interesting than that, so we can say the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side would be the rest mass energy, m sub naught c squared, and the hypotenuse would be the total energy, e sub t, and notice that the total energy can be written as mc squared, which can be written as this right here, so this can be written as m sub naught c squared divided by mc squared, or m sub naught c squared divided by gamma times m sub naught c squared. And of course, the m sub naught c squared can then cancel. With other words, the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over gamma. And that is a really interesting relationship because, after all, gamma is the constant that tells us relatively how fast things are traveling. Remember, there's a relationship between the speed and gamma. And of course, if you know gamma, we can then know the speed. And let me show you why that is so. Let's solve this equation for the velocity of the object. So we can say if we bring this up here and bring that down there, we can write this as 1 over gamma is equal to the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. I'm going to square both sides when I do that. I get 1 minus v squared over c squared is equal to 1 over gamma squared. And now multiply both sides by negative 1. By doing that, I'm going to write v squared over c squared minus 1 equals minus 1 over gamma squared. And then move the minus 1 over. Let's move over here. I end up with v squared over c squared is equal to 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. 
I can now go ahead and move the c to the other side. So I can write v squared is equal to c squared times the quantity 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And finally, I can say that v is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. So here you can see that if I calculate gamma, I can very easily figure out the velocity. And so therefore, if I know this ratio on the triangle, I can use that then to find gamma. And once I have gamma, I can easily find v. Just to show you why that works, let's say that gamma is equal to 2. So what is the velocity equivalent for the object that has a gamma equal to 2? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug in a 2 in here and see what we get. So where's my calculator? So I'm going to do 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 over 4. 1 minus 1 over 4 is 3 quarters. So I'm looking for the square root of 0.75. So take the square root and what that is. So if, if gamma equals 2, then v is equal to 0 0.866 times c. So just by plugging in the gamma, I can figure out the velocity. And where do I find that gamma? Once I have the triangle that relates the momentum to the rest mass, to the total energy in the triangle, I can then take the cosine of the angle, and that is equal to 1 over gamma. So knowing that angle, I can find gamma. Knowing gamma, I can find velocity really easy. So it's a really slick representation of the relationship between momentum, rest mass, and total mass, which then allows us to do that. One more thing you may want to look at, how do we find the angle? Well, you can say that the tangent of the angle, the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case, the opposite side is p times c. Adjacent side is m sub naught c squared. So basically, I can find the angle by saying it's equal to the arc tangent of p times c, the momentum times the speed of light, divided by the rest mass of the particle. So in other words, if I know the momentum of the particle and I know the rest mass of the particle, I can calculate the angle. I can then use the angle to find gamma. I can then use gamma to find the velocity. So it's a very nice, neat way to use this triangle like here to find those various aspects of the velocity and in relativistic terms. And that's how we do it.